We're glad you're, you're still there. It's still the breakfast, and we will sincerely apologize for the fact that the program is being a bit draggy this morning. Uh, it's because of some unforeseen circumstances that we are facing here in the house. But we do hope that you'll be patient enough with us until the end of this program. Right now, we're taking our hot topic, which is on the rise of the dollar as against the Naira by day and by night and how much pressure it is putting on the parents who have students abroad and just as a small background um, the naira traded at 915 naira against the united states dollar at the parallel market on saturday while the pound sterling was sold for 1180 naira and now at the investors and uh, exporters forex window the naira commenced trading at 773 uh, naira 29 kobo per dollar on friday and hit a high of 799 naira 9 kobo uh, per dollar before closing at 778.42 uh, naira per dollar the currency lost by 0.87 percent compared to the 771 0.69 naira in exchange for the dollar on Thursday. So this gives you a background of what the dollar has become or what the naira has become. It is falling like like there's a free fall of the naira, and that also is affecting the people who have have uh, students or children or wards uh, abroad studying. But let's just try to make sense of what is happening here. Uh, we have a guest in the house, uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed Abdullahi. Hello. Is it that Mohammed is not hearing me or? I am not hearing Mohammed. We do hope that we'll put ba that back in order and come back to you. Mohammed, as soon as you're able to rejoin us, we'll go right ahead. But right now, we were told, <laughs> we, we always start like that, we were told <laughs> that if the I and E window is the only window and uh, there is no disparity between the official rate and the, what we term a bookie rate, the, the, the Naira will, will, will be strengthened and all that. Now we are not seeing much of a difference. Yeah. The official window is at 700 and something, almost 800. Mm. And then the Aboki window, which, if you ask me, is the real official window because that's where people get that's the money. That's where forest. people get the money. Yeah, so it's, it's going higher and higher. And we don't have a timeline that it will stabilize, which means we're just at the mercy of is it market forces or whatever forces makes the or make the naira to fall the way it is falling. All right, I understand we have him back. Hello, good morning, Muhammad Abdullahi. Can you hear us now? Good morning. Hello. Okay, we yeah, could. I can hear you now. Okay. We couldn't hear you. Uh, well, I, I was just uh, talking with Maureen here that um, we were told that. Uh, if every other window is collapsed into the I and E window, the Naira will be strengthened. Instead, we are seeing a weaker and weaker Naira by every passing day. Is it that the supposed good policy was a hoax <laughs> or something? Uh, what are your thoughts about this policy, that the floating of the Naira that we've had and the effect on our economy generally, not just education that we are zeroing in on today. Uh, thank you. Good morning, Nigerians. I think it's um, it's uh, it's pretty simple. I am not an economist, but I'm sure I did uh, economics 101 hmm. as an alternative course in the university, and I was told and I learned that. You know, the, the forces of demand and supply yeah. is germane and important to the price of a commodity or product. And in this case, uh, you know, the, the exchange of Naira is simply the demand and supply of it. 
we, de we have a demand for so much USD, you know, that is, um, you know, that is, you know, very high compared to what is supplied. I mean, what we get as a nation from the sale of crude. In fact, even the sale of crude, we have to import PMS, you know, a very major component of crude. So, and that requires a whole lot of um, uh, USD to be paid in exchange for us to get this PMS. So, the very remnant that we have is unable to service our over bloated economy that is so much dependent upon importation and foreign goods. This is a general problem from government to the ordinary citizen. I tell you, you go to the house of uh, an ordinary chairman of a local government council, let's start from that. Almost everything you find in that house is foreign, from furniture to whatsoever, everything is foreign. So you don't want to even talk about governor, the presidency, and so on and so forth. So this put a whole lot of pressure on the Naira. And then you rarely talk about the issue of perhaps our educational system is really falling and everyone that can afford it feels his or her world should be out there, probably in the UK, in the US, Canada, and what have you. And this also requires a whole lot of USD. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's a general problem. What we have to service all these things is actually not enough. So we are getting very little from crude oil sales, which is our main export. And then we have a lot to pay for all other services that we want to enjoy. Foreign goods and so on and so on, education. In fact, remember, even the airlines in Nigeria are complaining. They have almost $900 million talked in Nigeria that cannot be repatriated. And it's all because of the shortfall of the USD. So it's a, it's a major problem. We have to reset our economy to be largely dependent on homemade goods. I tell you, all other policies that, will, that the CBN or whatsoever, or the government is going to make, that will not gear us towards homemade goods. It's just going to be a cosmetic uh, policy. It's just going to be a cosmetic thing that in the short and medium and long run will continue to have the same problem. All right, Mohammed. Um, well, whether we like it or not, but as you said, whether we like it or not, these problems will continue. Uh, schools are not in the best of forms. Most of our public universities, you see them, you go there, uh, you can't even call them glorified secondary schools because they're not even qualified to be secondary schools in the first place. And so these are situations that force parents to send their children abroad for better quality education. Now, what would you say to parents who are in such a dilemma? You know, they have children abroad who are schooling abroad, they cannot access dollars. It was in the news a week ago, some Nigerian students in the UK whose uh, school fees were delayed by just a few hours and they were told to leave the school. What would you say to parents who are going through this situation right now, who cannot access dollars to pay? No, I think it's, a very, it's very simple. Now, that is why I always advocate for the fact that, you know, leaving the country or thinking of uh, dumping the country is actually not the best option. Uh, the, the very best option is actually find a way contribute in our own little very way to make the country work. Because the, the, the problems are, are just so enormous. There are so many. Okay, you have the means to pay, for instance. And then because of the exchange rate and so on and so forth, it's becoming challenging. So the simple thing is to bring your world back home. And perhaps find a way to make sure your representative from the House of Assembly to the local government chairman to your governors and so on make probably 
you know, join a pressure group that will pressurize these government entities and government institutions to do the right thing. That is, that is just the simple way. But again, I won't, I won't agree with you when you make a blanket generalization of our educational system to say most of our universities are glorified secondary schools. I understand maybe probably public schools, but we have some, yeah, we have some fantastic private universities as well at home. Yeah, I did say which public schools. Which are far schools. more affordable. Yeah, I did say public schools. I said public schools. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So we have, we have, we have some fantastic private schools, universities as well. We are making headways in Africa and even globally. So, and they are more affordable. Um, I, I don't have any reports or any news where they charge USD. So they're still charging in Naira. So those are some of the things we we'll also look at. Like I said, we have to look inwards. And it behoves on every one of us, every one of the citizens, the government, the citizens to do that. Looking inwards in this extent is also bringing back your words and then at what, sorry, or, or at, at most having them in private schools if you don't want them to go to uh, government-funded uh, universities. You know, this is, all your, this is also the parents' contribution in making sure that we have less pressure on the Naira. So, so I think those are, that is just the major, uh, you know, that is just the major thing that we can do as Nigerians. And like I said, we can continue to pressurize government. For instance, let, let's, a, a little di 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 diversion, but I think it's important. I was reading over the news two, three days ago that majority of the uh, Nigerian governors forum were in Kigali, Rwanda for a retreat, and I was laughing. I what do you need to go to Kigali exactly. for a retreat for? Mm -hmm. All of them. You know, this, is also a, this is also another pressure on the USD. Because this guy will go with extra codes, they will have to pay for hotels, they will have to pay for transportation, a whole lot of um, all and sundries and so on. So, you know, so things that are not necessary, why do you have to do it? Mm. So it, it is important that we contribute our quarters. And it, like I said, it behoves on every one of us to make sure that homemade products and services are what we promote at this moment. Okay, um, well, uh, just, just a point you raised. Um, a lot of people have argued that even the, the private institutions that we have, except for very, very few of them, uh, every other one is just having the advantage of not going on strike. Uh, otherwise, they may not necessarily be turning out or churning out uh, better graduates than we have in the public institutions. The curriculum is basically the same. It doesn't really train you to face the world like you find in other climes. And that's why a lot of parents still resort to going overseas to put their words because it's more practical. Uh, there are very many things that they are exposed to and all that. And if you put a, a, a public school graduate in Nigeria alongside a private school graduate in Nigeria, I'm not sure you'll see that marked difference. I don't know what your thoughts are on what the private institutions even are doing, apart from the fact that they don't go on strike. Do you think they have the curriculum, you have, they have the, the, everything that they need to make their students that they graduate from those schools to measure up to students, let, let's say from Yale, let's say from uh, uh, other institutions in America and the UK and all that. Do you think so? Because when we are doing a revamp of our educational institution, it's not just the public schools. Yes, I, I, I think so. I, I, you know, even, even let's start from the public schools. We, we have so many Nigerians who've graduated from public schools and go on to excel in the same Oxford, Yale, Harvard, and so on and so forth. Mm. You know, so I don't think it's, um, it's, it's, it's a problem of uh, perhaps even the curriculum as much. It's just a problem of uh, really adapting to modern world technologies in teaching, mm -hmm. you know, and, if, and yes, perhaps a bit of curriculum as well. Because seriously, even from our public schools, we've had students go out there and compete. I remember even, even, even last year, we have students from Amadou Bello University who, who, who went on, on, I don't want to mention brand name now, 
for the popular uh, uh, brand name in, 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 in China to win innovation awards and, and so on. So uh, it, uh, we are not really doing too bad. You understand? But the, what, what, what we are not doing right is the fact that we are not empowering these universities, whether public or universities, to do more. You understand? So if I come back to your question specifically, yeah, there are, there, there are a few of the, of the private universities that are really doing well. I mean, we have private universities in Nigeria who are ranked in the first 50 in Africa, you know, who have, uh, you know, in the past 10 years been able to be very innovative. Their students are all over Nigeria doing so well and perhaps even globally uh, contributing uh, to innovations, technology, and so on and so forth, you know. Uh, yes, our founders, for instance, founders of multi-billion dollars, uh, uh, what's the conventions across the world? I don't want to keep mentioning brand like I said, but these guys graduated from Nigeria and they are doing so well, you know. So it's it's it, I think it's just a little bit of push from everyone, from government particularly and from citizenry and so on, and we will do far better than what we are doing at the moment. Mm. And that is why I keep saying. The contribution is behoving on every one of us. We can't just leave it alone to government. Okay. Because if you look at the amount Nigeria is contributing to the economy of the UK alone, US, Canada, in the areas of education, is alarming. If we plow those monies back into our own economy and educational, and educational system, I tell you, we will be right up there with any nation globally. So mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to do more. We need to, we need to sacrifice more. Yeah. And we need to, uh, uh, you know, like I said, make sure that homemade products and services, including our universities, whether public or private, are elevated more. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, th I'm afraid that's much, the much we can take uh, for this morning. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, that was uh, Mohammed Abdullahi, a public affairs analyst, talking to us about the pressure that the uh, crisis, uh, dollar cri forex crisis, has put on the parents uh, now. And um, he said something very, very instructive. Make sure that um, the homemade products, whether education or anything else, are enticing enough for people to patronize them. And we should do more to fund our education and, and our educational system, educational institutions and everything and bring it up to standard, bring them up to standard. That's the thing. And let's stop strikes. Because, <laughs> like I said, if you put a private, a person from a private university and a public university, they, you may not see the difference. And sometimes you even see the public university graduate uh, doing better. But, you know. They spent five years for a three-year course, seven mm, years for exactly. a three-year course. That's the point. Yeah. Well, let's leave you with our quote of the day. You can achieve anything you want in life if you have the courage to dream it, the intelligence to make a realistic plan, and the will to see that plan through to the end. That's from Sydney Friedman. Mm. I am Maureen Menonwezi. We're thanking you for being a part of the show. Join us tomorrow. I am Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful first day of the working week. Bye. On behalf of the team, see you tomorrow.